Hello everyone and welcome back to War Game Red Dragon. We have a tournament game for you guys today between the Major Bikefish and the Major 4SP3R4 who is also known as Maurice. And this was on the Bootcamp Trained Harden tournament which I am not a part of despite um, particip participating in and winning the rookie tournament. I was a little bit busy and uh, well I'm, I'm kind of glad to be honest because the reason for the delay in videos is uh, my power's been out for a couple days. My apartment's been like 90 degrees and it is all manner of unpleasant, but that is not what we're interested in right now. Right now, we are looking at a very, very committed opener from, uh, I'll just call him Maurice, because 4SP3R4 is a bit of a mouthful, from Maurice here going toward Anna, and we see Bikefish is going probably a more traditional route into Gregory and the top side of Boris anyway, and the second you see this with Bikefish, with Bikefish's opening here, you have to respond very quickly, because what Red wants to do, what Maurice wants to do here, is to fight over Anna basically the entire game. He, oh, jeez. Hey, that's no... Oh, man. One shot, splash damage, two downed helicopters, and the infantry inside them gone in an instant. K-52 gone as well. And you have to wonder, you know, seeing that, I would have thought potentially this would be a very fast game, but Maurice is not slowing down here. And we have 34 minutes, well, I guess 30 minutes left, shall we say, uh, in this game. And I just, I wonder, because Bikefish has so much stuff here. If he just takes all of this... All of his infantry, all of the couple of tanks back there as well, and, I mean, auto cannons. Oh, jeez. Uh, sorry if you guys can hear the sirens in the background. And just throws it forward. That's going to be really hard for Maurice to deal with, because, I mean, TH-495s are very good. This seems like a bit of a probably should have unloaded sooner moment, but then I do have to wonder. Buys like double M51, uh, M551 ACAV are... They're dedicated anti-infantry. And because of that, they're not entirely flexible. You're paying a lot of points for something that can't really fight tanks. M8 AGS. T-80s. Yeah, it does kind of worry me having the T-80s lead the way, and that's exactly why. They take one of those shots at close range, and, well, you have one fewer T-80. Although, maybe it takes two at that range. I think the T-80 that got killed was down to one strength. But here's a solution for it. The Vampires off the VDB-90, and, I mean, M8 AGSs are not cheap either, so... A lot of losses back and forth here. I say right now my money would be on blue, but only only in terms of trading, because right now Maurice has, well, Red has secured what they want here at least a little bit. So there is a Conqueror's team. It would be nice if some Spetsnaz Gru had survived or anything like that, and there needs to be reinforcements coming in, which it looks like there are early CV buy, probably a little bit too early is my guess. And I guess the whole reason for that is particularly because blue hasn't capped Sheraton either. There's no tick going on right now, and I think it's more important, especially considering Gregory has been lost to Bikefish, that Anna does not go that same way. You also need defenses here, because if Blue decides, okay, I have square, I'm going to shoot this gap, and there's not a lot in the way. If Blue Infantry gets into the town here, it is really, really obnoxious to get rid of. So it's a little bit interesting that we haven't seen... Well, we've seen some interesting choices from both players, and we're only about three minutes in already, so... And we'll see how this goes. No base defense either. Wow. Uh, that is a little bit surprising during a tournament game where you might expect to see a little bit no holds barred sort of gameplay. Uh, one recon helo around the back would have taken care of that. And it does kind of make you really, really wish that Red had kept the K-52 alive, especially after those first helicopters were downed. Uh, the K-52, if it had just gone sideways this way, pulled out of Anna, uh, that would have been alive for far longer. And... I mean, Maurice and I have played together before. I actually got his permission for this one. He didn't send it in, but I like doing tournament games, and uh, he was nice enough to to have me comment on it. So uh, he probably knows that, yeah, I'll make some recommendations one way or another. And I think all the games that he and I have played have been um, pretty fierce competition, so I think it's uh, it's good. I, I look forward to fighting him again after this. He's won now at least two rounds of the tournament. This is his third round of the tournament against Bikefish, and... It is no small thing to, to stay in against really skilled and really experienced opponents. I do think that the pressure from Blue is a little bit cart before the horse, though. There's riflemen that are just getting killed in the open. There's TH-495s that are getting killed by VDB-90, which is just... It's kind of thrown away for not much gain here, right? Because I guess the intention is to cut off the side... Well, the underside of Boris. But what Maurice has done is pretty nice. There's a Conqueror's team that's going to fend off things like the H.A. Abrams. There's just enough VDB-90 here to make this difficult. And yeah, I mean, they might struggle against infantry with the ACAVs. But even then, nice micro on the VDB-90. Their tertiary is off. They have that Vampire with 875 meter range. Able... Oh, come on, come on, come on. There it is. Oh, that's beautiful. 
H. A. Abrams killed by one, two conquers M's, splitting that gap. These guys never underestimate them. 26, 25 meter range is great. 23 p power is really good, and if the seed plane can get follow up, that is really expensive. So we've seen a ton, a ton, a ton of losses on the blue force side in only a couple of minutes, and that will make up for some of the initial engagements here. It does give Maurice a little bit of breathing room, probably explains why we have a little bit of a longer game instead of a quicker surrender, where blue, if they've been able to capitalize on the early trading, um, I think would be in a much better position right now. But M1 Abrams are decent for this. If there's chaff, there needs to be riflemen here as well. Otherwise, the VDV-90, we never underestimate the Vampire. It'll split between both of them, and yeah, it, well, it won't be a clean fight. But if that second one hits, yeah. I mean, they can fire and hit while stunned. It's not like the Edix that's guided or anything like that. These guys could have gotten a kill there. The fact that they didn't, I wouldn't necessarily count on that every time. And then what you're doing is basically trading 50 points of VDV-90, and if you lose even a single Abrams, the VDV-90 are well worthwhile. So this is... Oh, man. Are the ACABs doing better than I thought? No. <laughs> well, maybe if they kill the T-80, but even then, like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I guess. I guess, I guess. We'll see. I mean, it's a heat round, right? So it's it's guaranteed at least one damage that will get kills against higher armor. Uh, this is good. BTR 60 PBs, VDB 90. I mean, this is why Red wants to take Anna when they're doing the, the big push here. It's just, look at all the resources that Blue has to commit to get rid of them. And from multiple angles as well. Blue has to come in from the top, has to deal with the infantry here, has to deal with forest clearing. And there really hasn't been even all that many reinforcements on the ground up into Boris and Anna, which I, I really do disagree with. I think this is what this is where the fight needed to be, and to hell with the, the tick for just a minute here, because otherwise you have VDV-90, you have Spetsnaz Group just being outnumbered a little bit by riflemen, by Canadian rifles, by the TH-495s, and things like that. And I think, um, I think a little bit more meat here, even if it was just Motostrelki, would have gone a long way. Uh, just to making this more secure. You never want to leave just a blind Conqueror's M team. It's not really going to be able to use that range until... <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, see, if there was recon right here, those Abrams would be spotted, and at least one of them would be dead by now. But because the Conqueror's M is alone, and that recon died in the opener, mind you. This is seven and a half minutes in. More than enough time for a single Spetsnaz Screw Squad to come up here and go to Anna. Instead, there's a CV by the Fetter, which... I suppose, right? Like, there's a Conqueror's M here, there's VDV-90 here, but uh, it could be hindsight is 2020. but a single attack helicopter could come around the side here and just kill everything, because there's no anti-air, there's really no anti-air anywhere on the ground for red at all. I mean, where is it, right? It's not here, it's not there, and USSR has some pretty good anti-air pieces. I mean, maybe the Reliance is going to be on the K-52 in the, in the beginning, but then you have to be a bit more cautious with it. Let's see what this is here. <clears throat> that looks like a Cobra. Yeah, that looks like a Cobra. Yeah, AH-1F. Uh, curious, the more expensive buy here. It could be multi-purpose with the Itos, but we haven't seen a lot of armor from Red. I probably would have bought the cheaper one, while well, he might not have it in the deck. Yeah, we'll see. <clears throat> That's a fire position? Yeah. So the AH-1F lost sight of the VDV, fired the rocket pods anyway, which, if done really quickly, is a great decision, because they can just pound in and kill the squad. As it happens here, the VDV-90 did manage to get out of dodge, but this is why you can't leave these guys alone, right? And why you need the anti-air support and everything like that. U.S. Marines, once they get up into this section, the Conquerors are just dead. Unless something severe changes. And, yeah, I mean, with Anna capped, it becomes a fight over Gregory Boris, which is not going to be necessarily clean. The Conquerors team is dead here. VDV-90 in the open. Cavalry scouts are not amazing, but this needs to be also a right-click, not an attack move. Because what's happening is VDV-90 would ordinarily win very easily against Cavalry scouts. But because they're in the open... And the Cavalry Scouts are not. The Cavalry Scouts are getting a lot of damage mitigation that is, yeah, it's just, it's making it more of an even fight than it needs to be. It's risking having the VDV-90 get mortared or get hit by the Frog here. Or even, that's the Cobra. Yeah, look at this. I mean, there was more than enough time if those VDV-90 were right-clicked to have gotten into this town. And even then, they might be able to hide a little bit from the helicopters until they killed the Cavalry Scouts, at which point that becomes unsafe. For the helicopters to operate but you have to also notice if you're blue right now that there's no anti-air shooting this stuff down right the frog is fine the cobra is fine this is all all right and maybe the the choice was to rely on scratchets but we do see finally tungushka m by here and i think this is why i really do take base osa in ussr even for 1v1 is 30 points and it's just it's really great helicopter denial and planes that fly over it might well die as well which is 
always just adding insult to injury. So the VW90 are back up here. I think Bikefish probably thinks he's cleared this. And for the most part, he has, right? The VW90 are very damaged. And this is pressure on... Yeah, I mean, if, if Bikefish can take this section of Triangle and the top side of Fetter, that becomes really, really bad for Red. Because even if Boris is contested, Gregory is not blue, probably has units in Square Forest right now. And yeah, I mean, if, if Blue Caps Gregory contests Fetter Boris, then that is going to be a win over the course of a 30-minute game, certainly. So, yeah, second Tungushka by... This is where you wish you had that 30-point anti-helicopter tool in your in your toolkit. Of course, the Tungushka has longer range against them, but... Ooh, nice. Okay, so the U.S. Marines, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bikefish should see by now, because the Yodel has been recaptured. This was captured by Blue and then recaptured by Red, so you should see that on the ping. Blue should be aware of this by now, that there's something moving in Anna. And never underestimate 2VDV. They still have the Vampire. They still have three shots with it. It's 24 armor piercing. It's a lot. Possibly Cobra moving to intercept here. Yeah. That's probably what that is. Hmm. I mean, as long as Blue does this in time, I think they can still recover. We have a lot of bad trades for Blue. A lot of good trades for Red earlier on. But even then, I think... Uh, I think... This is going to be about the position, about who can get and maintain the cap in different places. Nice scratch it by... yeah. Yeah, this is nice. Scratch it's are surprisingly effective, surprisingly deadly to deal with, and the Cobra did take out those VDV just in time. Probably CVs right in that corner, which, yeah, I mean, Red might know that now, but what's Maurice going to really be doing about that? Because, I mean, unless he's sending in a blind bomber, which he could, IL-102 could get a lot of work done there and MAHES. This is why people like this tank. It's very fast for a tank. 70 kilometers per hour off-road is very, very nice, and it has good rate of fire, good armor piercing. So in situations like this where it gets the first shot off where it doesn't really have anything that's its natural predator, shall we say, it can very well clear a zone, defend a zone from something like VDB-90 in a Screshit, which, yeah, it was maybe a little bit unassisted. This is very sparse gameplay. It does kind of make you wonder how much was lost in that initial engagement. I kind of wish I had, um, you know, the destruction points counter tacked on here as well. If there's a mod for that that you're aware of, let me know, but I'm not aware of it. This is potentially a mistake. So anything this expensive, particularly something like a Recon Bradley that has five frontal armor but not amazing, like it can't really stand up to a tank shell, needs to know that it's not spotted. And the M382 Bradley is in the woods right now. It should not be spotted. Okay, it is moving out there. Blue did notice, and this is a concentrated push, so this is pretty nice. Here, good micro, getting the vampires engaged, BMPT just in the nick of time if it can stay away from those US Marines on the side, which is no guarantee, right? It's still spotted in here. Something from blue is close enough to give good recon, and that, I mean, BMPTs are very nice, but these are both very damaged. They need to be sort of behind something, but there's no meat here. There's all elite infantry, Spetsnaz, VDV-90, very, very deadly tools, but beautiful ambush by Bikefish, and goodness gracious. Yeah, this has just been a game of back and forth really good trades. It's like we haven't seen the sort of grindy attrition that you do in in more traditional circumstances where both sides are taking a lot of losses constantly over time. This has very much been a, okay, I'm going to get a good play against you in Anna in the beginning with those downed helicopters, and then Red's going to get a good play against Blue with a lot of the kills over here with the H.A. Abrams with the seed plane with everything like that, um, and then now it's Blue's turn again to give back in Boris, and I guess I will also comment, if you're gonna buy the seed plane, it needs to come out more than once, because even that Hawk Pip 3 is less than the value of the plane itself, so yeah, it did kill some tools, but it's actually more of a resource drain right now on uh, Maurice, on 4SP3 or 4, than it is against Bikefish, uh, which is a little ironic there, because you, you call a unit in, you get a kill, you get out, unscathed and you think to yourself well this is clearly what i'm supposed to do and sometimes the answer is well yes but no right it's a little bit less straightforward beautiful shot with conquers m if that can take out the bradley yeah yeah very nice very very nice that does make up for some of the losses here although not all of them spetsnaz are incredibly expensive and the mortar support here is very good take note of this if you're a newer player if you are uh you know not quite at major if you're trying to struggle up and ranked a little bit mortars are amazing. They're one of the best units in the entire game, and the damage that they dealt there to elite infantry is exactly part of why, because these VDV-90, 25 points, really, really good anti-infantry, anti-tank, anti-everything uh, sort of infantry that you pay a premium price for, and you have lower availability for that, are just down to one strength because of a couple of shots from the mortars. 
Uh, just these yurtles need to go back, resupply that conquerors, and some recon up here would be very nice. Or you could just do a blind push, but that's a little bit more risky. Oh man, if that cobra goes down. Yeah, like this is. Oh man, okay, so the cobra's alive. Scratchets, not so much. Maybe this is why you buy the AH1F to make sure you can kill these sorts of units, but the second that stun hits, yeah, that's just over. That's an 80 point kill right there from the Scratchets. And. We've seen bike fish come up and, and smack Maurice's units. Now it's time for Maurice to go up and do the same. Just, oh, this is goofy. This is so goofy. This is, I mean, I only caught part of this when it actually happened, but I, I think I saw part of this engagement and just thought to myself, okay, I would like to cast this. Uh, I think it could be just really entertaining. And it certainly has not disappointed for me so far. I hope you guys are enjoying as well. And if you are, don't hesitate to leave a like, share, subscribe, and all that YouTuber nonsense. We will have, uh, I always do my best to put out consistent content. Um, you know, daily videos, things like that. When I lose power, there's not much I can do about it, but yeah, it's back now, and I've got a couple of recordings backlog that I wasn't able to upload just because also uh, internet problems, all this sort of stuff. Um, this is what happens when you live in an apartment building and there's an electrical fire and just lots and lots of pain. Um, but, oh, okay, so this is interesting. VDB-90, Rifleman, M1 Abrams, the VDB-90 are not in the woods. When you're fighting in this section of forest, have to be really, really careful about whether or not you're standing in the woods. And yeah, it wouldn't have saved the VDB-90 from the M1 Abrams, except that they would have probably been sparring. Like, you turn off that tertiary, and now your VDB-90 aren't shooting in at the rifleman on this side because it's a little bit too far. And the second those M1s come up, they get the vampires online. That's a bunch of dead tanks. So that is worth thinking about. And I do like this move from Bikefish as well, capping Gregory. Boris has been a bit contested. I wouldn't necessarily feel safe about that yet if I were him. But getting the plus one does apply pressure here. Well, there's 23 minutes left. Plus one is 345 points on top of it. It's not enough to win out right on points, but it is certainly enough to make uh, the Red Ford player, Maurice, really have to sweat, really have to worry about that sort of thing. And I gotta say, I do like the OBR 1987 buy. This thing will chew on medium tanks and spit them out and just hit. It is really a nice tool to take out things like the M8 AGS. So I do like that buy. I really kind of wish that Maurice was buying more Modestralki, right? It's almost like you see most people play this deck, or at least when I've seen most people play this deck, they play it, even a general deck, sort of like Mechanized, where they build up huge amounts of numbers, and then they back it with a couple of very potent tools like the BDB-90, and then they go to town from there, and I mean, I can't believe a single infantry unit with a launcher would have would have stopped this, and it wasn't there. So now that's not screw, there's a BTR-90. I would just take the BTR-90 and go around toward Dimitri because, I mean, why not, right? You might get some kills on the mortars, you might get some kills on artillery, you might even kill the fob, you might kill resupplying units, um, even resupply trucks, things like that. Nice resupply here on the Conqueror's M, by the way, that happened just in the nick of time there and did help zone out in Gregory more. And I guess the BTR-90 could lead the way here, but if there's any infantry blocking at all, this BTR-90 in the woods is going to struggle. It's only three frontal armor which I think people overestimate sometimes because it's a 30-point vehicle, but it is not the most robust of 30-point vehicles, and this is the engagement that Red wants. BMPTs making mincemeat of riflemen, and I guess, yeah, see, yep, this is what that OBR is going to do. One shot, one kill on the M1, and just not able to get the second one. You have to be a little bit careful about those mortars. Oh, come on, come on, come on. This is a command tank, yeah? Yep, command tank taking fire from the BTR-90, and even if it doesn't work here, which I, I do hope that it does, it has drawn over resources from Bikefish, who's trying to resupply, well, reinforce, rather, with infantry on the ground here, but they get the stun, and the BTR-90s do have grenade launchers as well. That AGS usually is pretty good here. Probably some higher-end infantry, I would imagine. Otherwise, I would have expected that uh, vehicle to work, but think about it as well. If the BTR-90 went around the side, Spetsnaz Gru would have made first contact with that command tank, and they would have done it with, admittedly, no vampire, but the RPG-26 is still 20 RPM, it's still 20 AP power. Command tanks from blue don't tend to be quite as heavily armored as to be able to comfortably uh, avoid that. So, yeah, I mean, this is pretty nice as well, plus two now. That fetter is counter-capped, and a lot of points in CVs, but it does make use of that triangle possession from Bikefish, so he's just trying to say, okay, well, if you want to slow down my points gain, you've got to come over here, you've got to deal with this, and did that actually kill the command tank? Oh, please no. Yeah, it did. Spetsnaz Gru got the kill. Oh my goodness, I would have been so mad. So, so, so mad if that was me. I mean, even pulled out, and then I guess 
Bikefish probably thought that it was only the vehicle back there, but when I see a vehicle like that, I would never, ever, ever assume that until I've cleared it out with infantry. And you have the infantry right there. Just send them forward. Get a hold on the town. Get a hold on the woods again. Make sure you're safe, because a command tank, even though it is more survivable, it is also way more expensive. And please tell me that's not... Okay, that's probably a recon Bradley. Yep, that's going to be another 60, 80 points there, depending on which type of Bradley. We've already seen the 80 point one. Probably another 80 pointer is my guess. And, okay, that's a big tank. No, it's a dead tank. Goodness gracious. I do love this strategy from Red as well. You pop up here, you get a couple kills, you hop back down before you die, and then you just reinforce and resupply and do it again. And every time you pop up here, you're going to get lots and lots and lots of kills. It's going to be a good engagement, especially with Spetsnaz, dedicated empty infantry killers with that Uris secondary. And let's see, four strength. I think they missed. Yeah, <laughs> goodness gracious. These guys kill infantry so fast, it beggars belief. It really does. And no... Okay. I think... I think, contrary to what I said earlier, my money is now on red to win this instead of blue. Which, I know we've watched from that perspective, but I don't always show wins. So, it could have been either way, especially with the tournament game, where sometimes we do like to show what could have gone a little bit differently. Nice escort here with the... with the seed plane, also with the IL-102. And, I don't know, the bomb position could have been maybe a little bit better. We've already seen an M8 AGS here, and a lot of people like to put the CV back there. I probably would have gone to the back corner, or say this edge as well. Could be a nice spot to take out some fire support. But uh, we'll see at the end if that IL-102 did get a lot of kills, because it, it very well might have. We're not really sure. And, I think, okay, so there's a rifleman here. Yeah, I don't even know. If they might be able to kill a BTR-9 yet. <laughs> This is why you don't shove the BZR-90 into woods like that. It's like it's a 30-point piece. It just got killed by base rifleman. Base rifleman. So bad. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are unhappy by that. Blue probably up about 20, 30 points on that exchange. But after all the other losses, I'm not sure that's enough. It's 120 points to 42 right now. And that is well enough for Bikefish to win here. But. But. Uh, well, I guess that is without an Anna cap as well, right? So Bikefish could come in here, cap Anna, and then he's ticking plus one again. But I think at some point you do have to buy more reinforcements for the ground, and if Red wants to right now, I mean, the VDV-90 moving up, Motostrelki moving up is exactly what I would do with them, just try and get in here, get up top on the plateau. It was this gold to begin with for a good reason. Yeah, then if he can counter cap in Gregory, and potentially, I would even say, if it were me, I wouldn't even try to fight over Triangle right now, because what's going to happen is if there's an ATGM here, or if there's an ATGM in the woods, or in the woods over there, that OBR is spotted as presenting side armor to all of that. You just want to pull this back, counter cap in Gregory, and then I would even say counter cap in Anna, potentially. It's a tough one. Um, it can be a tough one. Yeah, I mean, as nice as this looks for blue, well... Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm really not sure who I'd bet on, because betting on red also ignores the fact that, that blue is up 130 to 42 and gaining, right? So Anna CV has been replaced. Hmm. I almost think the IL-102 buy was probably not quite right. And the reason is just the sheer amount of stuff it has to kill to get its money back, when in the meantime... I mean, let's see how many CVs blue has bought. One for Dimitri, one for Anna, one for Cheridan, one for Gregory, one for Fetter. Replacement for Anna. So that's six CVs, that's 600 points. That's about six minutes, maybe five minutes of income right there in command. They can't even fight. Five minutes of income to units that really can't even fight. And that's just saying that they're CV Jeeps. If they're CV tanks, which we've already seen one, I would imagine another one is a command vehicle tank as well. Um, probably more like seven or 800 points, seven or eight whole minutes of income that have gone to that. And we've seen way too many bad trades on the ground to, to think that there's a lot left here for blue on the ground. Interesting. I'm not really sure where that was targeted. Uh, I could have been going for the corner. Sometimes the bomb dispersion is not exactly great. Yeah. I guess the other idea here is, from Red's perspective, again, you need chaff for this. You need Motostrelki, but you have two OBR 1987, so they can give the punch. You just need numbers now. And you go over and you retake Gregory. And if you retake Gregory, you can also probably squeeze Triangle Forest. Right, because where's the resupply route for blue? If, if red takes the buildings here, here, and the woods here, then this just gets attacked from two sides, becomes really unhappy, and that's all she wrote, basically. I mean, that, that could be a way back into the game that would go up to a plus uh, two, potentially, if the cap here is killed, if it's capped for red, and if fetter is decapped. 
but I'm going to do something about the Nighthawk as well. Tungushkas don't have the range for it. The Yak-141 that was circling, not out at the right time. And that's the issue with the Nighthawk. You don't really see it coming. So <laughs> you can't really call an airplane in response. It has to be either ground-based anti-air, which is my favorite, or it has to be a fighter that was already up there, already trying to, to deny. Right, so there, there are really your two options right there. We have about six minutes left in the game here, despite the 14, 15 minutes left on the timer and I'm really curious I think I think he might see one of two things if red can retake in Gregory Fetter that's gonna be a surrender from blue and if blue can retake Boris that's probably gonna be a surrender from red because if blue can retake uh, Boris that's gonna be a plus three for them right cancel out the BMD 2k here and their own cap and that's going to be just a lot to deal with nice K52 and yak 141 may be going a little bit deep if you don't have your seed plane which he does very nice coverage here. You don't always see the Yak-141 going for a longbow, but it is. And I think the MiG-25 was too. This thing doesn't actually have any armament that it can use for that, so maybe a little bit deep of a dive here. But yeah, I mean, that could work. The K-52, the amount of anti-air here has really been underwhelming from both players that even say K-52 up this far when blue has this much of Gregory. Like, I would have just had cheap, like you put a chaparral right here or even right there, K-52 is dead. Right? You might have even killed some of the planes as well if they fly way too deep. So I really think blue has been stretched on points on the ground by the sheer amount of command vehicles that they're trying to buy here, and it really has been detrimental to the rest of the gameplay. It's just, it's too much. You don't need it right now. You don't need that plus one. They didn't really need to buy the counter, uh, the recap in Anna. Just make sure that you can fight on the ground a bit better. Cool, man. <laughs> I do like watching the IL-102. I don't use it all that often, but it is very fun to watch. If that Nighthawk's up, by the way, this is going to be all toast, although I imagine they go for the most Drelki 90, and even this is chaff, but it's 15 point chaff here with 5 point boxes. It's 20 points per, 40 points for the double stack. It's very much not reservist spam, which, yeah, okay, reservists are a little bit cheap of a tactic, but I do like it quite a bit. There's the Nighthawk, Electric Voodoo, nice micro on the Tungushka, making sure to keep that Twin Raider gun off. Okay, there it is. Command Abrams K-52 actually cannot deal with that, nor can it deal with the M3A2 Bradley. But the IL-102... Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, is he going in with the auto cannon for this? You're kidding me. Yeah, that's why you don't do that. I mean, even without the DAP there, that's just... And the 27M was right... Oh, my goodness gracious, that's such a missed opportunity. If the K-52 had hung back, 27M picks up the command tank, and that's just done right there. Fetter's decapped. You do also know exactly where that command jeep was for blue here, so the IL-102, if it hadn't been used on trees like that, could have just come in and popped that down. Like, red has the tools in the air right now. Just use them to get the kills that you need instead of denying unknown positions. And then the K-52 was just un a little unfortunate, right? Of course, you don't need to do that in the air either. This is pretty nice. I like the double OBR. You know the Nighthawk is on cooldown, so there shouldn't really be anything there. And I don't know. I another k52 that's the third one man i've never won a game or i've needed to call k uh, three k52s at least not in 1v1 maybe in team games yeah but it's also never been clean there it's always been that i've been getting a little bit carried in those sorts of games oh down goes the longbow yeah yak 141 best helicopter hunter apparently uh, i was not aware of this but you know learn new things every day right okay fetter decap just probably running i would imagine or were, does that mean that they're on the fire that could mean, yeah, they were on the fire. So when you're on fire, you have to move. And that's going to be enough for 27M to get vision. No, come on, click it. Click on it. Oh, get the kill. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. The Command Abrams is not going to be there forever. You need to get the kill now and get out. <sighs> Waited too long, man. Waited too long. Oh, jeez. That was luck. Uh... I say that because if it, if it had gone a little bit further, the missile turn radius would not have been sufficient. Um, yeah, this is why this is really a hard retake. T-72, there needs to be smoke here on these super heavies. I'm actually really surprised you're not seeing that, particularly because this is um, a higher level tournament game as well. You usually see really comprehensive smoke micro from... Well, I guess it comes at the cost of other stuff, but I mean, it would keep a 1987 alive. It's 110 points on the ground. It's something that you definitely don't want to lose. So, okay, we have one of the two situations that I thought might end this. Gregory has been taken, Fetter has been taken, Maurice slash 4SP3R4 is ticking at plus one right now, and a command vehicle in Gregory could easily make that plus two. With 10 minutes left, that's 300 points on the board. 
and that is enough to well overcome Bikefish here. So Bikefish's best path is to deny that plus two. They need to keep red at a plus one. At a plus one, it ends up being a pretty much a tie game. Yeah, it would be a tie. It's within 10%. Oh no, Blind Bomb. Oh, please tell me this. Oh, no. If that decaps... Okay, it didn't. Good. See, I don't know about this. Like, M1A2 by into an SC27M that's already killed in Fetter and Gregory and even a little bit of time ago, right? So this is 180 point super heavy, but it does not have free reign on the skies. Frankly, even the IL-102, if it, if it gets a right click on the M1A2, it can usually kill it, uh, just because of the sheer amount of bombs dropped on its head, dealing one damage a piece, right? This is, there's a lot of tools out here from red to kill that M1A2, and what it looks like blue needs right now is numbers, All, unless, of course, they're using it to anchor a push into the woods here, and they already have numbers on this side. That could be something that we see. But I don't know if I would expect to see that here. And let's just go through, yeah, Humby CP, Hawkpip 3 killed. Yeah, I imagine Bikefish has probably had enough of this SC27M coming in. And oh, if he gets both. Oh, if he gets both. One, two. Yeah, that has to be game. That has to be game right there. I mean, I think, I think Bikefish could well have had it. Except we saw well over a thousand points in command vehicles, and they couldn't stay alive because there wasn't enough on the ground with them, right? So that is going to be a, a really big problem. We do have game two as well, so stick around for that, and we'll be right back with it here in a second. We are back with game two, and this one, I it's so short that I want to show it to you guys on neutral, which I know is not everyone's cup of tea, but... I think it would really be interesting to see what happens here to cause this game to be just as short as it is, because I don't even think there was necessarily any cheese with it. I was actually hoping to see this one. I, I hopped onto the server when it was being played live, and we do have... Okay, that's a seed kill, probably on, I would imagine, a Gepard. Traded for the Kurnos 2000, bad trade for Red. So, I mean, Red's playing Israel, but we have two blue four players, basically, so one of them has to go Red. Um, yeah, that's a bad trade for red off the bat. That has to feel a little bit rough. You're basically trading a 55-point Gepard. And the Hawk Heos, by the way, this thing is not a guaranteed or anything close to it to get a one-hit kill like that. It's, uh, it's actually really frustrating when this happens, and we can look at why. So this is 50-50 chance to hit. 9 HE power is not enough to kill in one shot. So what just happened is not only did it land the 50-50, which is before the plane's uh, electronic countermeasure score, which lowers that below 50, even including veterancy more than likely, or at least it's pretty close to 50. And then the 9HE missile critted, so it did extra damage. So it, it rolled a hit, which wasn't necessarily likely, and it rolled extra damage, which was not necessarily likely, and that has to hurt. But then we have a really aggressive opening here from Red with the Nimrod. And Red, by the way, is Maurice. Blue is Bikefish, so we're watching from the alternate, well, other side perspective from last time. And I do, actually, I really want to try this out, the Nimrod, so far forward. It's a 10-strength helicopter, and those ATGMs are pretty deadly. You have to imagine Blue is not happy to be denied golf this early. So, positional to red so far, but trading definitely to Blue, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, and even there, I mean, the Heos is not exactly your anti-helicopter work, but it did get the kill there. And that is a dead Cobra. Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm curious what causes one or the other to not want to continue here. Okay, could be the Block 15 gets shot down, but no. And the only anti-air is the Mach Pet too far away. This could be it, so Martyr 2's Leopard 2A, jeez, Leopard 2A 5 NL here. That should kill the Merkava 2As, like this, this, it's a bad fight because it's in the open. But even with that, there's nothing there that can handle the armor and the, the sheer punch that 2A5, so you'd imagine... Yep, Merkava 2A went down, Blue is winning this. Not cleanly, perhaps, and yeah, the Barak 2 killing the OCU. Okay, I think... Yeah, I think maybe that one could have gone either way. But I think after the first game, with just the, the number of losses of command vehicles, because these were played back-to-back, -back, and then losing, um, losing the plane in the sky that really the OCU, which is a very powerful and somewhat low availability tool, um, I'd imagine Bikefish just probably didn't feel like playing that one out, because look, 305 to 350 losses, uh, relatively close. The 2A5 would have made that more in Bikefish's favor as well, because it would have just probably cleaned up most of the stuff there. 
Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> that does happen. I've certainly been there myself in tournament games, and you just get really, 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 uh, just, oh, I don't want to deal with this. I've also had that during ranked as well, so I do understand. That's going to be 2-0 wins to Force P 3-R4. That's Friend of Maurice. And we'll be back with some recordings tomorrow, the next day, the day after that. Hopefully, the power issues I've been having should be fixed by now, and we should be able to get back to regular uploads. Uh, if any of you guys have enjoyed the Baldur's Gate 3 uh, videos, um, they haven't really been doing all that well. I'm not necessarily planning to continue them unless they get a little bit more support there. So views, likes, things like that. It's the unfortunate bit of, a, of being a YouTuber is just you can't really continue series that get literally nowhere. Um, unless you want to do like I've done that before. I did about three quarters of a year of Battletech and I ended up with something like 20, 30 subscribers. So yeah, I've done it before. It's certainly a passion project thing, but Baldur's Gate 3 for right now uh, is not quite enough of a game that I love that much to to do that much of a passion project for it. So if you do want that series to stick around, you got to show it some love. Otherwise, we'll see you guys again real soon.